This is Off Planet Radio. There we go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV, the show that continues to look for intelligent life on planet Earth. And if you're tuned in, you one of those, and we got a good show for you. Emily's back from her travels. My travels. Yeah, her travels. <laughs> She's a, uh, a global galloper, sort of, well, <laughs> hemispheric anyway. Somewhere. Hemispheric at this hemispheric, point, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Semi-hemispheric. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I guess we're going to have Goofy tonight because Goofy is what it is. But hey, you got to lighten it up sometimes, right? So welcome back. It's, um, wow, it's the end of, holy crap, tomorrow's May Day. It's Beltane. What else is it? Wallapragus night? Uh, yeah, all kinds of the cross. Oh yeah, Valsburg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Valsburgus? Yeah, Valsburgus yeah, well, night. Yeah, yeah. So it's the crossroads of the springtime occult season, mm. and uh, here we go. The rituals have all been done. Notre Dame was torched. Um, we managed to get a shooting in over the weekend in San Diego, and so uh, <laughs> things, <laughs> squeeze <laughs> squeeze one of those in between squeeze the other them. nonsense. You, know, right? you just look for it. It's like they have to do this stuff. So. Uh, let them go. Let them have their rituals. You know, this this is uh, all desperation moves from my standpoint because we have found intelligent life. We know people are waking up. And um, if you want to know where to find us, right now you can't really find us on the website because the website is being nuked to death by bots. But you can go to youtube.com forward slash off planet media and especially patreon.com forward slash off planet media and if you go to the patreon site you can sign up there three dollars a month will get you in the door and that gets you the full length shows plus the mp3 audios that you can stick on your oh you don't have an ipod anymore never mind um and <laughs> so, so uh yeah uh, our guest with us tonight is uh, a filmmaker activist working in the fields of um, chemtrail geoengineering, the anti-vax movement, and the subject of tonight's first segment anyway, the impending breakout of 5G. Um, and we want to welcome back for our prize and a very timely message, Matt Landman, welcome back. Hey, I really appreciate you all having me on, especially to talk about 5G. <laughs> yeah, this is, um, this is the big hot button issue. They've you know, I was surprised at how fast they rolled this. It was like they really pressed the button in the last 18 months and just kind of rolled this thing over. And everybody's like, you know, when smart meters, when the smart meter rollout started, there was a, lot, a time lag and people had a chance to rally. And I suspect they learned from that. And I suspect that what they've been doing is covertly rolling this out, putting the infrastructure in, and now they're ready to just pounce on this thing, but they've got people like you out there who are just a royal pain in the ass to them. So uh, thank you for that. I, I, wish <laughs> I, I wish I could be more. And, and yeah, you are right. When the smart meters rolled out, um, for instance, the state of New Mexico said no. Uh, the city of Fairfax, California, which I just went and spoke at a city hall meeting or town hall meeting in Fairfax, California, they said no to smart meters, right? But now you are right. The infrastructure has been deployed uh, without people knowing, and now under the guise of this technological race um, to beat China to 5G, we don't beat, uh, according to Trump, if we don't beat China to 5G, then, then America will be lost in the race of technology, so we have to get there first. But I, I, I have my doubts that they can meet their deadlines and get it rolled out as fast as they're saying, especially in rural communities, but I'm um, We'll see. It's all it's all fair game now. It's all I mean, it's all this unraveling uh, dystopian sci-fi film at this point. I saw that uh, Mill Valley, California, also put up quite a, a a blockade and got it kicked out of there. Mill Valley's interesting. There's there's an elite enclave. So when I looked at this, and I saw some of the places where they were not getting five G, it was almost like the elites went now. Nah, 
we're not having that, not, not in our community, but you're fine for the rest of the world. We know we need that. Um, well, exactly. Just like Israel, for instance, yeah. um, Israeli firms are actually behind this technology, but the entire country has said no. And then Mill Valley, yeah, you've got a bunch of rich million and billionaires, and they come in and say, no, we can't have this technology in our residential neighborhoods. And they put in that zoning ordinance, which is one of the strongest ordinances out there. But then uh, neighboring counties, neighboring cities, they try to do the same thing. Verizon steps in and sues them immediately, like Danville, California, just when we spoke there. And um, they, they put up a, they tried to prevent um, Verizon from coming in by putting in uh, ordinances that weren't as doable for Verizon. Verizon wants a tower every 500 feet. It sounds insane. And when I was watching the, the Verizon representatives speak about it, some of these towers are one cubic foot. So these things are so small, we won't even be able to tell that the 5G tower. I suspect that ultimately we'll end up with them around 1,000 to 1,500 feet as we, as we fight back. But You're still, dropping out a little bit, Matt. Go, go ahead and pull. Oh, oh, my fancy was helping. I'm just going to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Only that for the rest of the time. Yeah. It'll be all right. So I don't know what you didn't hear. But either way, the, the communities that are fighting back and trying to put in the ordinances that the telecom industries are having a problem with, the telecom, for, in, for instance, Verizon just turned around and sued Danville, California, and Danville had to back down because they're afraid of the repercussions from the FCC. The FCC is also putting in shot clocks, okay? So before with the power companies, they didn't put in any sort of shot clocks like um, with the smart meters. But now with 5G, they're putting in these, um, it's like a sporting event. They're claiming that they're only giving uh, local municipalities a certain time frames. They give them a shot clock, the shot clock ticks until it's over, and then you have to make decisions by the time that happens. When you say shot clocks, you're talking, obviously you just dropped out for a second. They're giving them a, a period of time where they have to decide if they're going to do 5G or not. Is that what the shot clock is? Oh no! I wish it was that. Easy. Oh, I couldn't hear you. What is the shot? What is the shot clock for? The FCC and, and I'll turn the mic real quick. Okay. So the FCC, um, the Federal Communications Commission, they have told all local governments, state level, city level, that they cannot um, consider 5G based on health implications. They are not allowed to talk about health implications, and they've been given a shot clock for certain decisions like um, their zoning ordinances and um, how it's going to look, especially that they're allowing them to consider for certain durations of time. So they're giving them a 30-day shot clock, and during that duration of time, they're allowed to think about aesthetics. So they're allowed to consider uh, okay. what, the, what the towers look like and then put in their ordinances, but that's it. And then once the, or, the, once the shot clock is up, like when some sort of sporting event, they're not considering you know, childhood leukemia or anything like that. So why is there, I mean, I, I'm, this is sort of a rhetorical question, but are, are they, if, have they given any sort of official reason as to why they're not allowed to consider health issues? Because it'll slow oh, yeah, down. Yeah, because there's health issues. So, okay, so right, 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 right. right. You, usually you don't hear them come out and be so blatantly honest that we don't care. Usually they'll wrap it around something, oh, we've done some studies, there doesn't seem to be a problem, but this time they're just saying, we don't care, you can't talk about it, you can't consider that. Well, yeah, and it is ridiculous, and the state of New Hampshire has fought back, and they've created a commission to study the health impacts, and they're asking questions such as, why are the radio frequency limits set by the FCC 100 times um, larger, they're 100 fold larger than um, China, so, uh, excuse me, countries such as China, Switzerland, Russia, um, Italy, so, and then also, New Hampshire is asking questions like, how come the FCC only considers thermal impacts? So the FCC, about 20 years ago, did a study on a mannequin showing a cell phone to their head and showed that the mannequin's head didn't heat up. And because there's no thermal, like there's no heating, then they claim that that's all they have to worry about, that there's no problem with non-ionizing radiation and no proof whatsoever, and that they can just move forward with this technology, right? But radio frequency does cause harm, and we can talk about that. There's a lot of studies. So, but I mean, that's kind of, that's sort of the point there, right? That they were using a mannequin. So that's basically what they consider people to be. It's just, you know, bodies at this point, essentially, right? Like that have been, you know, dehumanized to the point where they're not much more than mannequins, right? That's That's how they think of people. Well, they got microwave ovens to the place where you couldn't feel the heat on the outside. I mean, the early models 
the big Lytton microwaves, those babies got hot. But over time, they refined the array inside of them and did a lot of insulating to make them appear to be safe. They're not safe. And it was the same thing with mobile phones. And people don't understand. We're dealing with a lot of different frequencies here. And, and these non-ionizing waves, short waves, and correct me technically if I'm wrong on any of this, Matt, because you're much more schooled on it. But we're now dealing with a new critter with 5G, because 5G is these long waves, is that correct? Okay, so that's, that's one thing that's really tough on this issue. It's an invisible soup of radiation. We're surrounded with it, and none of us got any upbringing with this at all. We were never told about Wilhelm Reifer or Joseph Geibel or Nikola Tesla, any of this, right? None of this information that we should have been brought up with. So, so I can simplify it. This is my goal and my task as an activist to be able to simplify this, especially any of these topics that come up with, whether it be vaccines, chemtrails, geoengineering, I mean, GMO, 5G. So here's the deal. Radio frequency waves carry information, okay? Mm -hmm. Radio frequency waves can be AM waves that are 1,000 feet tall. They can mm -hmm. be FM waves that are 10 feet tall. They can be current cell phone technology waves that are part, part of the search people, which actually has 5G. Um, there's other radio frequency waves that carry data, for instance, the 4G, okay? And then the 5G is a radio wave that's one millimeter in size. Now, radio waves are the exact same speed as light waves, 186,000 miles per hour. So our bodies actually can get confused and think that these waves are light waves if they're small enough. So when, <sighs> when the waves are AM waves and they're 1,000 feet tall, or FM waves that are 10 feet tall, or even current technology that's a centimeter or two, these waves go through us, right? They go through us, they carry information, they don't fog on. The one millimeter size, 5G wave is actually created as a weapon. So it's weaponized technology because it absorbs into your skin. It's called an active denial system. Mm -hmm. The military created this technology, one millimeter size wave, to create a frequency fence in the Middle East so they can create an invisible fence where if you get into this area um, in your human, your skin will burn because the wave absorbs into your skin. Now, 5G technology is also used in body scan, okay? As you go into the airport, you can look up mm -hmm. that body scanner, it says one millimeter size wave technology. I always opt out because I have that mm -hmm. right. I have the right to opt out. Well, in a 5G environment, you won't have that right. You'll be surrounded. You'll, you'll be in a body scanner 24 hours a day. So opting out at the airport will just become <laughs> silly at that, at that point. Essentially, yeah, it'll, 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 become, it'll become almost fun. So yeah. the, the body scanner technology, along with the 5G, that wave has been slightly tweaked in frequency um, in hertz, meaning how many times it goes by per second, right? Time of hertz, we discovered all this information about tech, uh, technology and frequency in time of hertz. So it's exposed to so much electromagnetic frequency, non ionized radiation, it's died in, at the age of 36, I believe, in time of hertz. But yeah, 36. So we've got these waves, right? And when they are shrunk enough to the certain size and frequency, they don't absorb into our skin enough to burn us, but they go a little deeper and they absorb, absorb into our skin, which cause all these problems, such as infertility or childhood leukemia, or tricking your brain into thinking you're in bright, bright light. We can, talk, we can do a whole episode on that. You have this circadian rhythm biological clock. Yeah. It's um, there's, based on your endocrine system, your hormonal system, your, your um, pineal gland, the certain a gland in your brain that absorbs light. And when you, so for instance, there's, and I'm not back to my two, there's a research study by the National Institute of Health, and they were studying utility workers that were installing cell towers. And there was a statistical anomaly. Um, if you ever taken stats, this one pretty large. 10% of these randomly sampled utility workers were committing suicide. 10%. Of the rest of them were pretty depressed, right? Which is the past question. But 10% committed suicide. And they were determining that their entire biological um, system, so we're tuned to the clock of the Earth, the, the Earth's circadian rhythm, um, called the Schumann's resonance, is actually set at 7.8 hertz. And 
we are actually beings of that, the, yes. of that frequency. So we're on this biological clock. And when the sun's up at noon and the sun's down at whatever, 8 p.m. or whatever it is, our bodies are set to that clock. We have a biological rhythm. And say you're on your smartphone really late at night and you're getting blasted with, with what is blue light and you try to go right to bed. Yeah. Your body has been absorbing blue light, which is right next to UV on the spectrum, ultraviolet. And it's thinking it's been in bright sunlight all day, right? So your, your clock's messed up and your body thinks it's still daytime when it's not. Well, similarly, these utility workers, they're working on these towers, and because the radio frequency waves that are so small are being identified by your body as bright, bright light, their clocks are getting messed up. And the times during the day when the bodies would be creating dopamine precursors or serotonin or dopamine and all these happy pieces, you're not you're not making any of these happy pieces anymore. You see these rates of childhood suicide going up to the roof, suicide, all these things because of these devices. So we've got to learn about all these things. Like blue light filters. You really can't stress that enough on all your devices, blue light filters. You set the clock and it knows what time of day it is. The app says we're gonna we're gonna take the blue light out of your screen and your light's gonna be now orange just because the sun's down. It's gonna mess up your, your clock and your body. So a lot to know and all this power. So yeah, there's, there's a lot to it, This is very very interesting. And you know, I have so I, my theory about this whole thing with 5G, which about a lot of things they do, not everything, but a lot, is they actually like, they're letting us have this argument a little bit about it right now. But I think they've largely, <laughs> I like that. I, I think they've largely uh, actually already rolled it out. Oh, Just have. like, you yeah. know, they get people, you know, we know that they're announcing rollouts here and there. I actually think, I actually think it's been, going on for a really long time and i'll tell you why they're just talking right now about rolling it out mostly in los angeles here there's a few areas where it's been supposedly been done and, and then other areas they're still having town hall meetings about it and talking about it and whatever but i just you know was in costa rica and costa rica is one of these um blue zones on the earth where the people tend to live you know upwards of 100 you know for a variety of reasons um but one of the one of the one reason probably at this point, not the original reason, is that there isn't very much. Uh, they 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 have, they have mostly two and three G there, right? And it, you know, there's not there's not much more than that. Um, one of the things I noticed because you were talking about the pineal gland and light and all of this kind of stuff, I'm one of those people like I'm very visual. Like I close my eyes and I see all sorts of you know geometry and whatever. Like you know, like people train themselves to do through meditation. It's been a gift of mine for a long time. It was so off the charts when I was in Costa Rica that every time I'd close my eyes, I would become almost dizzy because there was so much more there than there is here. Here it's like very faint and I have to really look for it. And, and it's really just like kind of one shape, but there there's like, it's like pattern after pattern after pattern. And I'm like, you know, what is being blocked from my perception with all of this, you know, radio wave frequency, you know what I mean? Because it was like, it was, I felt great when I was there. I had no body pains. I wasn't tired and whatever. But I did have this occur a couple of times where like, I could not close my eyes when we were laying out in the sun because I would become dizzy from all the stuff I was seeing. So it makes, you know, and this is all important information, like the actual freq natural frequency of the earth and the biogeometry and things like that that we're supposed to perceive. That's what's really being interrupted. I mean, sure, we know about all this other kind of stuff, but the information we are supposed to be receiving from the earth and from the sun and from our environment is being massively distorted and replaced with short inf waves that carry information that we don't need and are not good for us. What do you think about that? Like, wow, that's awesome, and you're really perceptive. And um, I can definitely feel it when I get out of the city and I get into the mountains. Or um, for the clothing line that I'm launching back from 5G, I actually went over to Southeast Asia to try to figure out where I could get Pa <laughs> Tordai Tongdang, which is copper made out of uh, fabric made out of copper. I didn't find any. Uh, fabric made out of copper in Thailand, but I did learn how to say pot or die tong dang. But either way, you say it really well. <laughs> uh, like a thousand times, and everyone's like, "You want fabric made out of copper, right?" But did you did, did did you look in um did you look in India? I heard that they have some of it in India, but it's not it's not mainstream over there. Where, where it is mainstream is is China. In the country of China, when women are pregnant. They're encouraged, if not uh, incentivized, by the government. By I was told by some Chinese people that the government requires pregnant women to wear sequins to protect their cell phone. Have you? So 
There, is, is it available here? It's just too expensive here? Because I think I do have a, a blanket that has some of that kind of copper uh, stuff in it that somebody gave me. And then I know that they sell socks and that, that Tommy Copper stuff or whatever, well, right? Yeah, the, the compression copper socks are for more health and protection. The, there are a couple companies on earth that do exist without really any style or any branding, and they're expensive. I'm looking to bring this to the world in a cool, fashionable way, so especially kids. Uh, yeah. Year. Um, mm -hmm. But but back to your, your question, I do believe that there's some. I mean, it gets pretty much like right? I think that humanity is under attack. I don't think it's really a coincidence that I see that the full moon, so heavily chemtrailed, and the sunset, the sunrise, these are completely heavily chemtrailed. We're beings of light, and there's these light download codes or whatever you want to call them that are yeah. being blocked in so many ways. But it's not that bad in other countries that aren't talking about. States, it's not as bad. So when you go somewhere else, like when I was in Thailand, is that I go in the mountains. I, I'm playing catch up on something. I crazy dreams, crazy visions. Yeah. Because I feel like that we are in a control grid, and, and yeah, they are already experimenting and blasting these different They already have it. the five G stuff set up. So many cities like you said, an anti-vaccine protest where we lost our rights to medical and exemptions from children. I went to Sacramento for the protest, and the entire city is, I mean, I was busy around the city. There's 5G panels, 5G plant posts uh, every, every block. But I'm pretty sure they're already experimenting with there. And then when I spoke in Barksburger, California, on 5G at their town hall, the vice mayor, he said he was in a neighboring city that was experimenting with 5G, and he saw an entire flock of birds drop dead right in front of him. I'm getting that video together. That was very encouraging in this town hall meeting. They said the word more morning about 30, 40 times. They talked about birds falling dead from the sky. So that's hopeful. Wow. Um, it is interesting. The, unfortunately, in Costa Rica, they are starting, to, you know, to chemtrail heavily. And, uh, you know, but I did, I, they're way far behind on some of the other technology. They were chemtrailing every single day there. And the, and it's so interesting. People there are obsessed with watching the sunsets. And I didn't want to break to them that they were not watching natural sunsets. There's all this incredible pink and blue and purple. You know what I mean? Like, like what may have been considered a natural sunset in Africa years ago, but this is not that. In fact, we were on the way back from smack, you know, we went on like a tour one day where we did like zip lining and horseback riding and stuff like that. We had a private, you know, tour person driving us around. And on the way back, he had the back seats were the windows were tinted. The front, the, the ones in the front were not. And when you looked at out <coughs> through the tinted windows, you could see that some of the clouds up very high were actually blue. Dark blue. They, they looked white through the regular, through the regular um, window, but with, you know, not all the clouds, just some of them. I had never. I was like, "What kind of toxic drip is that?" I had never seen clouds so blue like that. He says he sees them fr frequently, so they're they're hitting them with some stuff, but not the full range <laughs> of uh, frequencies. And and I didn't see any kind of the you know really like harp style clouds that have the sort of vibration look through it. It really was just more basic trailing. You know, and then some of the cloud craft and things like that. But um, yeah, it's interesting. It, it is, it is, it is still possible to escape a little of the madness in some of these other countries. So, here's the thing that I'm looking at. Even if we have these copper garments and protective coverings and things like that, who the hell wants to live their life like that? And I do think we are seeing the formalization of a rollout that took place over a very long period of time, mainly because Verizon tells you this. It's called long-term evolution, LTE. It's right on your phone. And they've been gradual, using gradualism to roll this technology out. Now, here's the thing. You pointed out about these tiny little antennas, these transponders, these mini towers, micro towers. How feasible is that for the kind of rollout that they want, which is to make it ubiquitous? Well, they want to have these small cells, the technology of the small cell. They want that exact technology in every single cell phone. So your phone will be a transmitter and a receiver of a recognized one size wave. Okay, so, so 
web of infrastructure. It's a relay system. Exactly. Okay, so now we we'll get to the the grandmaster theory. We saw the rollout of the smart meters. From what I'm able to see, because they will not give you the actual schematics for smart meters, these smart meters are in fact routers. They're on what? At this point, <laughs> smart meter rollout is probably close to 80% in the United States, at least in geo, geo, uh, population dense areas. So, what if the smart meters are the transponders for the 5G? You see, well, in the Internet of Things, all of them. Especially this and for those of you that have a smart meter on your home, I, I really encourage you to figure out a way to opt out and go back to the analog meters. Most states still have that ability to just call and ask. Um, I was promoting the smart meter guard, the same steel guard that was the biggest biggest on top of it. But now I've learned that the smart meter actually is. Um, it influences the dirty electricity coming out of all of the sockets in the pump. So it can, it can basically um, put bolts into your body from the electrical outlets, and then the radio frequency waves coming out the backside, they still, it still caused some fire hazards by increasing safety levels of vegetation. And that's another thing about these electromagnetic fields and 5G and all these towers. There's so much research showing so many different things. One, one thing that needs to be considered, especially with all this trust of wildfires, forest fires, and especially in Northern California, high levels of electromagnetic fields cause terpene levels in plants to go through the roof, which causes flammability. So you're causing flammability in plants, and then you have these extreme fires, which I hate to say, this year is going to be another extreme fire year. I think it's Matt, your your vo your voice is dropping in and out. I... Oh, so this year's fire danger, we're gonna see. Um, maybe I can. Okay, so you can hear me now, fine. Sorry, yeah, sometimes fine. it's fine, and then other times. Other times it's almost we can almost not hear yeah. you at all. Sometimes. Yeah, and it's like a there's almost like a background echo going on. I don't know. It, it sounds like you're in a Faraday cage. Unplug <laughs> <laughs> it in. Okay. So how's it going? It's a little better. A little better. Yeah, just project. Because um, your words are important. Um, I, want, I want you to be heard. Thank you. So, so yeah, we need to get the smart meters off of our homes. And it's like the, the boiling truck thing. We're slowly being introduced to all this radiation to the point that when 5G rolls out, we won't know where all the harm is coming from. But it will be the cell tower projected on our doorsteps. You know, these things are going to be... Uh, 300 feet from windows of homes, emitting radiation 100 times more than current cell phone power. Right, we're going to be seeing the childhood cancer and leukemia already. They're we're studies already that show, seeing it. Yeah, already yeah. there's studies that show that electromagnetic magnetic fields make sperm swim in circles and make uh, one generation later children can't produce eggs. Right, so this one millimeter wave, I think it's it's a push towards transhumanism where when the next generation can't have children at all, we'll be tricked through the media to live forever by what, transferring our consciousness into a cyborg version of ourselves. So this ultimately goes into transhumanism. This is the whole thing. They just immersed us in a, into an electromagnetic pool, turned our entire environment into a toxic system of bombardment and ultimately it's to kill off the biological human Qu quickly i just wanted to say something real fast randy i think what you proposed there i i that, that didn't slip by me about the possibility that the smart meters are really the transponders since they always you know oh, no i think, suspected that for a long yeah, time yeah so you know what i mean so that they could double as the thing that we think they are and the transponder that exactly. i think that's 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 a that's a good catch there and as far as what you were saying about the analog thing, Matt, um, if you have an analog meter, at least in California, this has been my experience, they will let you keep it. You know, like I, you know, at my last house, we had you know, a sign and a lock around it saying this is not to be replaced under any circumstances. And when they came into the neighborhood, they honored that. They didn't mess with ours and whatever. But 
when I moved to the house I'm at now, what happened was we got a new air conditioning system. And the way the air conditioning system was, they had to take the analog meter off to, 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 to do it because it, the, it, because of the way it went, right? And the guy who was doing the air conditioning system, didn't, he didn't even know what I was talking about. This is a new thing for him. But the new air conditioning systems that are being built, they will not work with the analog meter. So I had to get a digital meter. Now they swear, I, I, I went, I was for three months without a meter on my house because I did not want the, the smart meter. And they said, you know, so I had to go through this process where you can get a digital non-radio frequency meter, right? I don't actually believe, I think that they just put a little tag on it that says that and make you wait so that you think it's happened. But the way that they're going to be tricking people into these new meters is as they start to have these newer appliances and stuff like that, even if they, when you're buying them, it doesn't say it's a smart appliance, they're just not wired to be able to work with the old analog meters. So they're going to force people that way. And nobody, after they've already just installed a $15,000 air conditioning system in their house and find out that it won't wire in, are they going to say, okay, go rip it out and I'm going to have to go hunt down and find a new one because nobody can afford that. So this is how they're going to trick people into it i don't doubt it i mean people don't even know that the technology is bad so on with convenience comes for instance bluetooth technology and bluetooth <laughs> headphones the worst uh, pe people think they look well it doesn't matter how they look having bluetooth headphones on is like sticking your head in a microwave right mm -hmm. they, yep. they tell you not to put the cell phone up to your head well having that bluetooth in your ear is just the same those microwaves are going right you know, right to your head and totally disrupting your your biological system and making you depressed. It's also it's also training your neural your brain patterning and your neural networking for receiving voice to skull, right? It's almost like training wheels for voice to skull technology. If you're familiar with you know the voice to skull with yeah. Yeah, I haven't uh, completely thought about that, but it, I think it's just a slippery slope. Eventually, yeah. putting a chip in your wrist, and then eventually they'll. If you look at Elon Musk, who who I don't trust one bit. No, um, he's got a company, Neuralace, that supposedly yeah. connects to your yep. smart car and plugs you in through uh, a plug-in in your jugular. That's what he claims. Wow. He's terrifying. <laughs> like I was watching when he was on the Joe Rogan podcast, and like they're presenting as the solution to the problem, the very problem that they've created. You know what I mean? It's just like they have a cyborg telling you how to protect yourself from being a cyborg. You know what I mean? Like that's the level of, and people are sitting there on a certain level eating it up and thinking that he's on their side and he's helping and whatnot. But it is very weird. Um, yeah, the Bluetooth is scary. The blue, and I find that any technology that has any kind of blue light on it, I don't just mean the blue light coming off the computer, but the vaping machines, any of these things that you charge that have a little blue light on it, that they carry a certain band of information that is particularly useful in mind control. So, Well, the blue light is the most confusing because we can see it, but we don't realize the, the color spectrum. For instance, on one side of the color spectrum is infrared, and that's mm -hmm. the side of the color spectrum that's harmless. We can't mm -hmm. see infrared, but it's harmless. And then on the opposite side is blue and then violet. And we can't mm -hmm. see ultraviolet. But you stare at the sun too long and that ultraviolet, those ultraviolet rays will totally destroy your eyesight. Same with blue light. Blue light will cause macular degeneration and cause yeah. blindness over 30 years for people that are glued to their screens. A lot, yeah. of people ask, a lot of people ask about the 5G and how does it interconnect because all of it's interconnected, right? The fluoride mm -hmm. connects to the ingredients in the vaccines, connects to the GMO, connects to geoengineering, connects to 5G. And the 5G geoengineering interconnection is the blood brain barrier permeability. You've got this mm -hmm. aerosol spray, which if you're healthy and you're not around too many EMF fields or too much fluoride, because fluoride can go past your blood brain barrier. Yeah. It'll actually escort the aluminum that's in your body from maybe your flu shots or the geoengineering or whatever, your aluminum deodorant or, or whatever means you get aluminum in your system. But if you don't have these certain triggers to get the aluminum into your brain, mm -hmm. you're not gonna suffer as bad from whatever it be, Alzheimer's, or you're, you're talking about mind control, voice to school, what have you. So these high EMF fields, which there will be no escaping with the 5G, it literally breaks down your blood-brain barrier. And then when you're introduced with aerosolized metallics through the chemtrail agenda, or even other ways of aluminum, it'll go straight to your brain, and then their agenda unravels more rapid. I mean, it's pretty obvious once you start to look through the right lens, but a lot of people don't see it the right way. Do you think, so... 
we were talking about the way all the things like hook in and work together. You know what I mean? And, and one of the other things that can go through a blood brain barrier are parasites, right? There are some parasites that can go through the blood brain barrier. And one of the things I've talked to, I don't know, I got into it a little bit with um, uh, Derek Bros when we had him on, because he does a lot of stuff on, on 5G. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but I have a theory that about, you know, with, with sugar and that one of the ways we can protect ourselves from the effect of all of this actually is by reducing the amount of sugar we eat, because I believe that sugar is what feeds all of these kinds of systems, like the candida, the yeast fungus network in the body, and then the parasites, they all feed on sugar. I have a theory about sugar as programmable matter, whether that's correct or not. The increase in the amount of sugar in our food came at the same time that all of these other things were being introduced. And it happens that your body's natural resting blood sugar rate, if you haven't just eaten a meal containing sugar, is actually five grams. So I had this theory, and then I found this in one of my nutrition books, that if you haven't eaten a meal with sugar, your resting blood sugar rate will be about five grams. So I, have a, I, I intentionally try not to eat sugar, and I actually think that you know they have many reasons they call things what they are, but the code could be sitting right there, 5G. If you have more than five grams of sugar in your body, you're going to be more susceptible to some of this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And so I just found that that was interesting. But all of these things, like all of these systems, sugar is cubic, crystalline, and can hold information. And so it interacts with that stuff too. And people are looking for all of these things that are obviously poisonous and forgetting about sugar being one of those main things. Have you heard anybody in all of your studies or travels or talking about this, talking about the effect of sugar that sugar has and how it interplays with all of these things that we're talking about? I uh, definitely have. I haven't heard of it being programmable. That's really interesting, and I'll look into that. I do know that Monsanto, when I was just first hearing about, about Monsanto, they were very aggressively buying up all the sugar beet seed companies. And now mm. if, you, if you get sugar, and it's not cane sugar or, um, or, or some very random, 99% of the sugar beet seed companies, mm-hmm are owned by Monsanto and have been mm-hmm. quite some time. And, and sugar is completely dis- destructive and feeds cancer. And the biggest thing that sugar does, in my opinion, that I know of at least, is it, it disrupts your body's ability to be mineralized. So yep. if we are mineralized, our bodies are not desperately absorbing toxins from our environment. You know, right. when, there's, when there's radioactive cadmium and strontium sprayed from the chemtrail agenda, our bodies don't have to absorb that because it's desperate for calcium or something like that if we're up to speed on our minerals. But if we're intaking sugar, mm-hmm. sugar it, takes, it takes 54 molecules of magnesium to process one molecule of sugar so as we're burning through all the magnesium in our body because of a little sugar that we had maybe with the coffee the acidic coffee we had this morning and it it builds up we're we're leaching all the minerals from our body we're not getting back up to speed with plant-based minerals or or whatever it you know you do to get your minerals back i've i've just been learning about shila jeet and getting Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is amazing mineral pitch. It has all sorts of minerals in it because our our, our food doesn't have the minerals in it that it's well, going to be. No, that that's the other thing is at the same the same period of time that our soil started greatly reducing the amount of minerals in it was when they was when they really started the sugar pitch, and then a lot of these other tech things that we're talking about came after that. And absolutely, like when people, um, if you try and because I do you know I do nutritional consultations and stuff, and the thing people find that you know. When they're trying to cut sugar, it's really hard unless you really up your mineral consumption. And if you take a good mineral supplement, the coming off of sugar is a lot, you know, is a lot easier. So these things, you know, I don't believe any of this stuff is coincidence, but they all came about at sort of the same time. You know what I mean? And then the thing with the sugar, even cane sugar, and even some of these healthier, quote unquote, healthier sugars, like uh, coconut sugar or maple sugar or whatever, they still have those properties of being crystalline and cubic and, and able to hold information. So in some way, and it's the thing humans love, right? It's a treat. You you get hooked on it when you're young. Even if your parents are giving you a good organic treat, once a kid tastes something sweet, once they have juice, they don't want water anymore. You know? I avoid it as much as I can. And I stick to a banana every single morning. That's enough for me. And then come to find out, bananas are prebiotic. So I guess I was doing something right. (laughs) They have a high glycemic index, though. So So I'm curious to know, know, Matt, as you've traveled around and gone to town meetings, interacted with other activists and the public, and I use that term advisedly, what is your pulse on the average, again, advisedly person 
getting it, the dangers we're in right now, the fishbowl that they're creating? Well, there's the details. It's, it's unbelievable because certain towns have certain levels of awareness and education. And when you're in a town that cares a lot, for instance, Marin County, where Mill Valley is, or Danville, California, these towns that I'm going to, the reason why it's on the agenda is because these local activists have fought to get it there, right? So that's one thing. There's towns that are slipping this through. And for instance, when I lived in Sedona, Arizona, it was on the front page. I went to the city hall meeting and they, they delayed it. And I got on the email list and then they delayed it. And I got on the email list and then 10 emails later and almost a year later, I go to the city hall meeting that's on 5G small cells. They're rolling out hundreds of small cells and putting up 27 towers in the small town when they only have one tower currently. And I was the only one there, right? They had played the game enough that I was the only person that spoke for the community. And they said that their hands were tied. And I said, what about pregnant women? What about all these studies? And they say, we, we have to roll out this technology. And I say, what does that mean their hands are tied? What happened to local rule and the fact that we, are, we have autonomy over our environs? These local governments are rolled over consistently by professional people who come in trained in the dialectic method and basically steamroll them using intellectual verbiage that sounds good. They basically just grease them up and roll them over. Well, it's attorneys with big words. Yeah. Exactly. You're completely right. And they don't realize the importance of where they stand. I mean, like, for instance, I was at a, a town hall meeting for the city of Fairfax in the town of Fairfax, and the one mayor there for this certain time frame they're controlling the outcome of, of these lives for generations to come. You know, it's this random time that they're in. And uh, she seemed pretty uh, controlled. Maybe she got a little handout or something like that. But to answer your question, in the towns and cities and counties, because there's different levels that you can fight this stuff at. There's the county board of supervisors. That's if people are watching and you really want to do something, go to your county. Start there because your county can do the big overarching or maybe your town. It depends on if you've got a cool mayor or something. It's really about this one-on-one, -on -one, getting to know your local representative and getting in there. But the meetings that I have been to that have been initiated by amazing local activists, the people that are there are so eloquent and so amazing. And I'm honored to stand side by side with them. I'm talking about Harvard brain doctors, people that have written amazing books on the subject, PhDs from around the world. And they're saying that this is ludicrous, right? That this is ludicrous, that, that the next generation could be completely sterilized and that this technology has not been proven safe. It, and it has not, right? And the people, they're amazing. The activists are amazing. Unfortunately, at the age of 38, I'm, I'm the youngest one speaking. As much as I would love to see some, some of the youth involved, they're just, they're just not there. And it's my goal as a human being on earth to try to inspire the next generation right i mean i've got for my film if you haven't seen frank and skies i've got these awesome graphics and flyers that i hope that appeal to the youth and i've got the film frank and skies that i'm getting translated into spanish for other countries and if you want some of these flyers you can you can have these flyers i'll send them to you and you can get activated as a youth as a kid get out there in the world and, and you know honor the truth with integrity but a lot of these kids nowadays They've been trained by their social media feed and they've been mm -hmm. trained by their peers and their smart device. They've been trained how to think and they, they're, they're trained to not think that anything would ever be against them. You know, they, they always would say, well, why would they do that to us? They mm -hmm. would never do that to us. And if I get really deep and say, well, I don't think World War II ever ended. The Nazis are still going, you know, they're not, yeah. they're not listening. <laughs> Even if I come at a calm and collected manner you know I can, I can win some of them over but it's it's not easy it's an uphill fight and we really need to get the next generation informed and 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 fighting with us do you and what about these towns like you know so we have these uh towns where people are slightly more awake and, and active and then you have the towns like what you're saying where people they just can't believe that you know the government or these corporations would do something to hurt them or would you know would do it for that reason what about and this is the one that i always find the most flabbergasting and on a certain level i respect the people who say this like at a weird level but like i, I it horrifies me 
we don't care about that kind of stuff. There's people that say that they just don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's people that don't care that we're being surveilled constantly. There's people that like, uh, that like literally like it, they don't want to be bothered to even think about that, that kind of stuff. How much of that do you see? Well, a lot because pe- people are trained to trust that the FCC, for instance, is looking out for their best interest and that they don't have to worry about weaponized one millimeter size waves and non-ionizing radiation caused by electromagnetic fields and radio frequency <laughs> emissions. I mean, like, yeah. did they ever learn about this in, growing up? Like, did we ever learn about Royal Raymond Rife and the Rife machine and how he could tune the frequency mm-hmm. of the Rife machine and actually... So if you don't know about Royal Raymond Rice, he's from San Diego. He invented one of the first high-powered microscopes and studied mm-hmm. at a microscopic level viruses and how he can mm-hmm. the frequency and learned that every virus and cancer cell has a frequency that it can be destroyed at. Similar to the opera singer who tunes her voice to a certain pitch and shatters the wine glass. Mm-hmm. Right? Just like that, you can attack viruses and completely heal yourself of certain ailments with this rife technology, Royal Raymond Rife. And this is in the early 1900s. We didn't learn about technology because it's a really easy way to, to help ourselves and also be attacked, right? So we don't learn about it. And then someone comes up to you as an adult and tries to school you on this complex technology. There's no way, right? What are you going to do? It's, it's, it's really an uphill battle. But there are a lot of people waking up, a lot of people, like when I went to this rally in, on vaccines in Sacramento and I'm wearing this shirt that says no 5G, I'm not a lab rat, no 5G small cells, a lot of people were surprisingly coming up to me and saying, oh, where do I get one of those shirts? Yeah, what is this 5G? I can't believe it's going to be on my doorstep. Because you could end up with a 5G tower 300 feet from your bedroom window right? Then we have to explore risk mitigation techniques. We need to learn how to paint our walls and get our own radio frequency meter. I encourage people out there to get your own EMF RF meter, okay? There's a lot of different options online. They all work. Just look on Amazon, RF EMF meter, and you can learn about how much radiation you're being exposed to now, and you can learn about how to mitigate your exposure now so that this cumulative exposure, it accumulates, it bioaccumulates, just like that tuna fish that's out there eating all these little fish and eating all these little fish and it bioaccumulates mercury and then you eat, the merc- you, you eat the tuna one day and you get mercury. Just like that, we're picking up this radiation from our cell phones, our tablets, our smart meters, our GPS systems, the cell towers that we drive by. We're building up this radiation and it's time to learn about it now so that when there's more radiation, we can actually get less of it and we know how to mitigate these exposures and we know about magnesium and Epsom salt baths and taking care of our, our, of our cells with juicing and fasting and grounding. Learn about grounding and balancing your energies. Learn about how influenceable or, or suggestible our minds can be. If you learn about binaural beats and different brainwave patterns, you can see how easily suggestible the human mm-hmm. mind can be. Organite. Right? Organite, learn organite. About organite and and here's energy. something I'm looking at right now, and this is early, but this is plasma. Ooh. Tell and, more. <laughs> um, my friend Christine Anderson sent these to me. These are made, uh, I'm trying to think of the gentleman's name right now. Sala is his last name, Dr. Sala. Looks kind of like Ormus. It does. Which is, which is minerals, if people don't we're know. Looking, we're looking now. These, these are biological mitigation. We're looking for a way to use plasma in a live field to mitigate. So what do you do with that plasma you have there, Randy? This way, I'm still waiting for instructions, actually. Oh. <laughs> some, of this, some of this is, uh, like I said, this is personal use, biological. Some of it you ingest. Um, you can put it on your body. Uh, one is gold. This one's platinum. And the other one is, um, I'm not sure what this is. It's called manna, but you can see that. Huh. But plasma is interesting stuff. And if you begin to look at it, you realize plasma is a prime material in the universe. Plasma is all around us. So, <clears throat> The alternative researchers out there 
right now may be our first line of defense in bringing us some technology we can use. So wait a second, this makes me think of something. So if you go back to looking at, you're, you're, very, you're familiar with Sean Gattro's work, yes, Matt? Um, Sean Gattro? Sean Gattro is the guy, Alana speaks about him sometimes and whatnot, but he's the guy who's documented all the cloaked cloud craft in the sky. He has okay, a YouTube yes. channel, Industrial Surrealism. Good in try. some of his early videos, he was documenting some of these cloaked cloud craft, which, you know, I, I think he's, people have largely come to the, conclusion that they're, you know, cloaking themselves with plasma and they're emitting plasma. But he would catch them sometimes, like literally vacuuming up regular chemtrails. So is it possible, and these cloak cloud class, they're, qu they're quite funny, right? Like it, you can get into these situations with them sometimes where you'll be talking about them and then they'll start doing what you're saying, almost like they have an it's awareness. It's gonna drive you into woo-woo land here, Matt. <laughs> right, but it makes me wonder, Randy, if you're talking about plasma, I, as 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 an in, as a mitigation thing, and if there is either some other sentient life force from here or somewhere else, or somebody who is playing with rife style technologies or plasma technologies, and they have figured out a way to get their stuff up there, and you know, so, and use plasma so, as a defense, and also vacuum up some of the other crap, that's kind of fascinating. I'm speaking strictly off the top of my head here, because for the last 24 hours, I've looked at these things and meditated on them, and done some research. And I'm convinced, the more I look at the theories of plasma, that we're looking at something above the toxic technology that currently exists. There has to be. I mean, this is, this is the only, the hope we have right now is that we can invent our way out of this because we can't deconstruct the existing platforms that are around us, at least not yet. Having said that, the alternative to this is to find frequency technology and start to take the fucking towers out. And that's on me. I said that. If somebody Matt, would call me a Matt, ha Matt, have you met anybody? Because I know you travel around a lot and speak to all sorts of people. Have you met anybody who is, you know, making Rife style like machines or doing anything like that? Are there people doing it? <clears throat> so, um, so there's Rife, Royal Raymond Rife, and there's Wilhelm Reich. Right. right. We know we know about that with the organite. Yeah. Right. And so Reich, he he um, would make orgone generators. He was really into plasma and mm -hmm. um, the creation of cloud busters. And right. I, mm -hmm. my my first conference that I hosted in Vancouver, uh, I flew in Harry Rhodes, who's one of the top researchers on that topic, and he makes these cloud busters, which I do believe there's a there's a big hell there with negative organ, negative organ energy, positive organ energy with plasma, right? And being beings of frequency, and it, and yes, I think that there's a battle between good and evil, and there's there's likely good beings trying to help us out, sucking up chemtrails and all that sort of stuff. There's the possibilities are endless. I I saw some really interesting truncated pyramid shaped craft things when i lived in sedona arizona actually the sky in sedona arizona was was oh, beyond it's loaded it. i've been there yeah. loaded loaded unreal unreal so many questions at the end of all of that even <laughs> even my mom after after the i, I made the film frankie skies check it out frankie skies the movie.com is for free and after the film and about a dozen conferences and going all all these shows and all this and my mom had seen the film my mom came to Sedona and I still didn't know she was not awake to chemtrails like right she's not willing to and after her trip to Sedona she's like oh wow this is actually real huh <laughs> I'm like didn't you watch the movie right but either way um yeah definitely there's something to be said for all of that the, the plasma the ionization of the sky and I mean there's there's endless information out there the the rife what he, I mean, the Reich, Wilhelm Reich, he would even um, point his orgone generators at suspicious stars in the Tucson desert. Yeah. And while, mm -hmm. he, while he was yep. calling in orgone energy and actually bringing life force energy back to the desert and back to even aged rocks, he was reversing the aging process of rocks with this orgone energy, similar to doing a rain dance and calling in this energy with where indigenous uh, tribes did. He would do it with this... Um, device that layers organic and inorganic material and he would point these at this 
suspicious stars in the sky and they would retract from the energy. I believe that there's some of these suspicious stars. Mm, that, yeah, that makes you wonder the death star, the dark star, you know. Uh, just by way I mean, of correction here, let me add this the, the, the producer of this plasma is named Tom Salas. And um, I will that info, some of that information I've already put out in the interview I did with Christine, but we'll put that out again. I, and that I didn't mean to just derail you, I just wanted to correct the record while we no. And I can't wait to hear more more about that. I yeah, think I think it's exciting. There's so many risk mitigation techniques that we can learn, especially as time goes on. I believe that we're evolving, right? And we're evolving to be able to what raise our vibration. And if we can raise our vibration and get in tune with that, and trust our instincts, and know and cultivate our intuition, and know how to raise our frequency, then maybe we can actually just bypass all this crap by. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? By just stepping up a level. Just real quickly, I asked you about the Reich and you started talking about Reich. I know a lot of people are doing stuff with Reich, but I don't hear as many people talking about recreating Reich's technologies. Have you, I mean, I'm not asking you to expose anybody if they're doing it in secret, but have you met people who are working on that? Yes, there's different um, variations of his machine. Um, there's a woman who contacted me in Arizona who said that her dad was had developed it and then been killed. And there's a, there's a lot of sensitivity around yeah. things that cure everything. Yeah. So um, I have seen, I have seen it around. I haven't dove headfirst into that one necessarily, um, All right. but it is, it is out there. And I, I hope that, that um, as we enter into whatever this is, the apocalypse, that this information can get carried forward to the next generation, because I think it will be, utilized and important as we continue into this i mean world of um, of frequency radiation right yeah so as we turn a corner here because we're coming up on the the hour on the public side and uh will you stick stick around and maybe do a segment with us for the patreon people sounds good Great. Maybe we can get into some of the really esoteric woo around this. Yeah, I can ask like the, really weird, the really weird questions. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We we'll, we we'll go completely off planet for that. <laughs> but let people know first off where they can find you, how you can be seen, and how you can be supported. I think those are important. Thanks, and I appreciate that. Um, I have a website or two, um, actualactivists.com. And on actualactivists.com, it's a resource for activists who are seeking information or truth on all sorts of things truth related especially the topics of vaccines geoengineering which is also chemtrails gmo and fluoride so actualactivist.com plural also frankenskiesthemovie.com on there i have uh, archives of shows that i've done links to my GoFundMe page, which I'm creating a clothing line called Sparrow, S-P-E-R-O, which is Latin for hope. Um, the catchphrase that I just came up with is, um, where there is hope, there's always a silver lining, right? Ah. All of the clothing is gonna have a silver right. lining, like lined with silver. And I'm making hats and baby clothes and maternity outfits and maternity aprons and baby blankets and jackets and sweatshirts and t-shirts and cell phone pouches so please check out um sparrow protection clothing which is at gofundme.com slash <laughs> gofundme.com <laughs> slash protection clothing um raising money to launch the company which will be up uh, by the end of the year i'm hopeful and and yeah i'll have cell phone pouches and hats very soon to to help to to protect from from the radiation we're exposed to. And then also on Facebook, Matt Landman. And on YouTube, please uh, subscribe and check me out on YouTube, Matt Landman, where I do videos. I just did an awesome video about this cell phone uh, tower outside of Whole Foods that was radiating the entire inside of Whole Foods so much that my meter, it was off the charts on my meter. And I took the meter into Whole Foods. I put the video up on uh, Facebook and it's got a 120,000 hits in just a couple of weeks, but I've been going to town hall meetings and those videos are going up online. So yeah, please show me your support by following me on, on Facebook, Matt Landman and on YouTube, Matt Landman. And I really did, appreciate the time. Did you show the manager at Whole Foods your, your meter? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> that would have been interesting. All right. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Yeah. And we will get weird on the other side. Yeah. It might, <laughs> uh, it might be a real good time to go underground, in which, in which case we become in Planet Radio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, get the page on that. See you guys. Come and join us. Patreon.com forward slash off planet meter. Bye. Here I have fabric made out of copper. I've actually been making prototype clothing and cell phone pouches, lining the clothing and the cell phone pouches with this copper material because it blocks EMF, EMF radiation. Here we have a Wi-Fi router that is on, and here we have an EMF meter from Germany. And I'm gonna measure here the radiation coming off of this. Okay. The radiation is over 2,000 microwatts per meter squared, so it's off the charts for this meter. So I'm going to now take this copper material, put it over the Wi-Fi router, and eliminate the radiation completely. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com.